There we go. Um, and namaste, guys. Christian Arlong, Life Enhancement Consultant, giving you a big and beautiful shout out on this Saturday. It is Saturday. This Saturday evening, it's about 9 o'clock p.m. Mountain Time here in Denver, Colorado. Uh, oh, that's interesting. Ujwala, Abma Namaste. How are you? Hope you're doing well. Hope you're living the dream. Um, for those of you logging in for the first time, we do these streams each and every day, usually in the evenings. And we talk about energy, healing, meditation, and practical spirituality, all for the purpose of moving your life forward. And um, I was thinking, I was like, Jeanette, I'm a namaste. I was thinking, what are we going to talk about tonight? So I just made myself a very large, very healthy juice. Um, carrot, what, what do we got? Carrots, celery, green apples, red apples, and I think that's it. I think that's it. Yes, living the dream. And so I want to hydrate myself. My body's kind of been run down the past week and a half or so. I've been pushing it really, really hard with my spiritual practice, with traveling, with working with clients, with living life in general as a human being. So uh, my body, and I wasn't aware of it until uh, until you know you just hit that point that you're like, wow, I think I think my body really needs to rest. Ashley, I'm gonna namaste. So, uh, I'm gonna be going to bed early this evening. I'm gonna take a, instead of a salt bath, which I typically do when I have a, a day full of clients or I do when um, I'm just feeling heavy, I'm actually gonna be taking a uh, Epsom salt bath, which is a different effect. Um, Leanne, I'm gonna namaste. If you're in pranic healing and you've done at least level one, basic pranic healing class, you're taught to take salt baths to clean your energy body. Now, what's the difference between taking a regular table salt or mineral salt bath versus taking an, an Epsom salt bath? Sharon, I'm gonna mistake. And part of that is Epsom salt has magnesium in it, and energetically speaking, magnesium is red energy. It's red prana, it's dilating the capillaries and the blood vessels, right? So allowing um, energy to flow through you and it calms, it stimulates and calms the nervous system. I know that sounds contradictory, but that's the effect. Now, if you just have regular salt in water, the energy is not red, the energy is green. So it's a different effect. I just got out of a salt bath, Himalayan salt, bam, there you go. So Himalayan salt, green energy. So it's good for breaking up congestion in the etheric body. So, uh, so I'm going to be doing that when I get off the stream with you guys tonight, and then I'm going to just glide into bed, put my new eye mask on, put my little earplugs in, and then just go off into La La Land. And I forgot to buy Sleepy Time Yogi Tea. Um, I usually have that, but it is what it is. You have a head cold. Oh, I'm sorry your body is not feeling well. Wow, thanks. Was wondering about Epsom salt for daily bath. Useful info. Yes. So I wouldn't recommend for cleansing purposes, I wouldn't recommend Epsom salt. I would recommend table salt, sea salt, solar salt, mineral salt, Himalayan salt. The best one would be solar salt because you can buy large amounts of it um, for inex in inexpensively. So a 40 pound bag of solar salt is like $6. You're upside down. How am I upside down? Really? Am I upside down to you guys, or is Krista the only one seeing me upside down? Let me know. Because um, usually it will tell me if it's squirrely or upside down. That's kind of weird. Um, if that's the case, okay, so no. Uh, so Krista, why are you the only one seeing me upside down? Is your phone upside down? So I want to jump on, and I thought a cool topic that it's a good reminder for us to be this for other people, and it's a good reminder for us us to seek out people that are like that. No, I'm right side up. Perfect. Thank you. And so I was watching a um, a clip of Mike Tyson. Not here. Okay. So yeah, so I guess Chris is the only one that's seeing me upside down. So Mike Tyson, for those of you who do not know, he was one of the greatest heavyweight boxers of all time. And he was nicknamed Iron Mike because he had an iron jaw. He's a very compact fighter and and very, very powerful. He hit like a ton of bricks. And 
you can learn from anyone at any time. Right, so certain people might be, might be saying, "Well, wait a minute, aren't you an energy healer? Aren't you a meditation teacher? Don't you spend your time in this spiritual world? Um, why would you be studying um, boxing or MMA or jujitsu or violent things where the purpose is to harm or injure the other person?" And it's like that's a narrow viewpoint on on life and a narrow viewpoint on spirituality because. The great, great teachers and holy masters throughout time immemorial had disciples and they trained those disciples to be great political leaders, great um, war strategists, great philosophers, educators, um, artists, right? Because the energy is coming from God, passing through the great ones, passing through that person's sat guru or permanent spiritual teacher, then passing through the higher soul of the individual and then permeating into the lower planes, the mental plane, the emotional plane, the physical plane, to affect that person's spiritual growth and evolution. So you can learn something from somebody at all times. Gopal, Atma Namaste, you just have to pay attention to what you're looking for. So if you see boxing as only violence, pointless violence, then that's what you're going to get. If you see... Um, you know, other kinds of sports, athletic events as purposeless, then that's what you're going to get. If you see um, a, a really great example is that Master Choa um, talked about prostitution one time. I mean, one time that I'm aware of, I'm sure he talked about it at other times. And somebody would say prostitution. Well, that's that's degrading to women. That spreads diseases that um, that uh, destroys families. Right. So. How you look at something, Paula, I'm gonna say how you look at something determines your perception, which determines your thoughts, which determines your speech, which determines your emotions, which determines your actions, which determines your livelihood, etc. So right viewpoint is very, very important. And you should know what Master Toa said about prostitution. And I and I thought about this and I was like, that's really interesting. And he says, in general, prostitutes have very big heart chakras. I was like, how could they possibly have very big heart chakras? Because these women are giving of themselves physically, sexually, emotionally, and, e and other times even mentally to satisfy and satiate the lower needs, wants, and desires of these men, which is more solar plexus. So the men have really big solar plexus Right? They have a need that is requiring fulfillment and a big heart chakra fulfills those needs. A big solar plexus doesn't fulfill those needs. A big solar plexus is looking for its needs to be fulfilled. So do you see how they're complementary opposites? Or I should not complementary opposites, complementary pairs. So the solar plexus, a, a big solar plexus complements a big heart. A big heart complements a big solar plexus. Somebody who is super, super giving and generous will attract somebody who is typically a person who takes, takes, takes. Does that make sense? So, so with these women who have big, huge, developed heart chakras, they spend their lives giving. Now, they're getting financially compensated, but at what risk, at what cost, what physical cost of their health, of their youthfulness, what uh, physical cost of their safety, what physical cost, um, financial financial cost, the money could be taken from them. Um, what, what about the cost of getting diseases? What about the e emotional trauma, chaos, suffering, bonding with the wrong people, bonding, um, not being able to bond at all with future partners, right? So it's a big deal. So in order for somebody to do that, they'd have to have a big heart. I don't know if I could sleep with people casually for money, whether I was attracted to them or not. That would be like my heart isn't that developed to, to, be, to just be open to anyone and everyone. So the point is, isn't that an interesting way of looking at a situation? So going back to the video I was watching early, earlier this evening on Mike Tyson was his coach or his trainer, Cus, C-U-S, you can look him up. And he was talking about in this interview on how 
profound the relationship that he had with his coach early on when he was 13, 14, 15 years old, that his coach saw him immediately as a world champion. The thought form that his coach implanted in Mike Tyson from the very beginning of meeting him as a 13-year-old amateur boxer was, you're going to be a world champion and you are a world champion, right? And that thought form was so strong and the belief was so strong that even though Mike Tyson didn't believe his own ability of being a heavyweight world champion, he believed it because his trainer believed it wholeheartedly. No doubt, no fear, no uncertainty, you will be, you are a world champion. And because of that belief, Tim, I'm not mistake. Because of that belief that the trainer had in him and the, and the willingness of Mike Tyson to accept that belief, it ended up making him a world champion and he was will, ready, willing, and able to do anything and everything necessary to satisfy that vision, to satisfy the commitment or the promise that he had to his trainer. So think about that. How many of us have someone in our lives who believes in our ability wholeheartedly, 100% and, su- and support us? And not just, how to, how to say this, not just like you can do anything you, that you want or you can be anything that you want, but that person backs it up with action and consistently and persistently shows up for that person and gives that person tough love from time to time to time to say, hey, get your butt out, of, get your head out of your butt. Hey, stop getting distracted and stay focused. Hey, you are wasting valuable time, money, and energy on, uh, on things that are pointless when you could be focusing on your, your target, focusing on your goal, focusing on your objective, and constantly, persistently following up with that person, right? That takes a tremendous amount of commitment. Granted, you have to walk the walk, you have to talk the talk, you have to go on the path to personal growth, to championship in whatever endeavor you choose, but to have somebody that's cheering you and pushing you to to become greater than you ever imagined possible, that's invaluable. And how many of us can say that we have people like that in our lives, right? And with 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 humility and with self honesty and with awareness can we say nina i'm not mistake can we say that we are also that for another person right are we that trainer that coach that mentor for another person that believes that that person will become great will become successful not even will is great and is successful and holding that thought regardless of what happens in that person's life. And that was what Mike Tyson's trainer, Cuss, did. Even though there were fights early on in Mike Tyson's career where he lost, where he didn't he didn't bring it 100%, where he was distracted during the fight, where he didn't follow the instructions from his trainer, his trainer never for one second doubted that he wouldn't be a world champion or was a world champion, right? So are we that for other people? Cuz I'm thinking of my I'm thinking of my own life and there are a couple people in my life that um have struggled, have been stuck at certain areas of their life that I've had to hold space and realize this person can do it. This person is not their negative situation, this person is not their negative program. Programming. This person is not their limiting beliefs. This person is a divine child of God. This person has unlimited potential. This person is awakening to who and what they truly are to become great. And I've, I've been able to hold space for some of those people over my 20 years as a spiritual practitioner and 15 years as a professional energy healer. And those people have been able to transform. Those people have been able to move their lives forward. Now, I'm not saying that 
I'm great and I do that with every single person in my life because there are some people in my life I'm like I even think I'm like uh maybe next lifetime right they have a challenge and the challenge is so big and the um, lack of awareness is so lacking <laughs> that I'm I'm like other than divine inter divine intervention from God yeah. or through an angel or through a healing minister, or through some act of God. Outside of that, this person isn't going to have a breakthrough. This person is going to stay stuck for the rest of their lives. And I don't, I don't project that onto them. I'm just observing their thoughts, their words, and their actions over a prolonged period of time. And I'm like, I don't know if this person's ever going to change. I don't know if this person's ever going to improve. But... I would love to be the person who can hold that space for every single person that I come across, no matter what. And I would say that Grandmaster Cho Koksui, my teacher behind me, he was an embodiment of that. When he would meet with beginner students, intermediate students, very advanced students, senior students, um, he always saw the best in everybody. He recognized that no one's perfect, at least not in this lifetime. We all make mistakes. We're all in the process of growing and evolving, and it's just part of it. But he would always see the person as the soul, see them as a being of divine light, divine love, and divine power. And if you recognize that you are a being of divine light, divine love, and divine power, you can start embodying those qualities into your day-to-day -day life. Let's say you are, um, you've been a smoker for 20 years and you identify yourself as a smoker, which immediately weakens your power, versus identifying yourself as a being of divine will. So if you identify yourself as a being of divine will, you see yourself as a being of divine will, you have the will to think like a non-smoker, to speak like a non-smoker, and to live as a non-smoker. Does that make sense? But you have to believe in yourself. You, first, you have to know who and what you are, and then you have to go, I am that. I am the non-smoker because I'm a being of divine light, love, and power. You can think about this with any addiction. You can think about this with Smoking addiction, drug addiction, alcohol addiction, shopping addiction, sex addiction, negative emotional addictions. You can think about this with phobias, right? Like you have a fear of spiders, right? A fear of spiders. And it's like, okay, I have a fear of spiders because of lack of awareness, lack of understanding um, from negative programming from the past. But am I the negative programming? Am I the phobia? Am I the addiction? Am I the limiting belief? Am I the, you know, the anxiety? No. What am I? I'm a being of divine light, divine love, and divine power. So when you get that on a higher level, you're able to function from that higher level. So a great guru, a great teacher, a great mentor is able to see that person at that higher level even before they are able to see it. And then over time, the the thought form from that guide, that guru, that mentor, that teacher, that trainer will pull that person, the student, the trainee, the disciple to become better. Just like Mike Tyson's trainer, Cuss, saw him as great. And by seeing him as great, it made Mike Tyson go, huh, maybe I am great or maybe I could be great. Okay, he believes I can be great. He believes I am great. So I'm going to show up like a person who is practicing greatness. So he would train all the time. He would, you know, yeah, I mean, you get, you get what it would take, the amount of commitment and sacrifice it would take in order to be great. And he lived into that because of the thought form of his trainer was so powerful. So that's kind of the takeaway for today's evening, uh, for today's talk, is do you have someone or someones in your life that can hold that space for you, that believes in you, 
to be great no matter what is happening in your life? And also, are you that person for someone else? I mean, think about it. Are you that person for someone else? Maybe you're that person for your kids. Maybe you're that person for one or two friends in your life. Maybe you're that person for your a client or two or all of your clients. Maybe you're a person for your parents. But th the thing is, what is our natural tendency to do when we are around certain people for a prolonged period of time? When you're around somebody for 10 years, you know their thoughts, their words, and their actions, right? And you can go, well, so-and-so is always going to be about the same. They're always going to have the same kind of relationships. They're always going to have the same kind of health. They're always going to have the same kind of career trajectory. They're always going to have the same kind of prosperity or lack of prosperity in their lives. So we start having what is known as a calcified idea or a limiting belief of that person's potential. And that weakens that person's ability to live into greatness. Patty, I'm gonna say, but if you see the people in your life as great, as great, as great, as you have everything you need in order to be great, you just have to apply it and see that person applying it, then that helps the person become great. Right? And I've had many, 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 many moments in my life where I've doubted myself, doubted my abilities, doubted my path. And all it took was one or two people to come into my life and say, Christian, I believe in you. Christian, you have, my hair is crazy right now. Christian, I believe in you. You have the capacity to be, for greatness. And just keep going, just keep going, just keep going. And that's what um, Grandmaster Cho Koksui offered me. That's what the Pranic Healing Masters have offered me. That's what the senior practitioners in Pranic Healing have offered me, is I always feel that they love me and they accept me as I am, who I am, but they also see me as a full, uh, as my potential being fully realized. And that's a beautiful thing. That's a beautiful thing to offer another person. Not just with lip service, but being congruent and consistently and persistently being a cheerleader for that person. I think it's great. And the tough love, as we mentioned earlier. You gotta push people certain times even though they may not be open and receptive to being pushed make sense so um that being said i'm gonna end tonight's stream to take my epsom salt bath relax my nervous system and and prepare for a really deep night's sleep um for those of you who are looking for healing you can go to my website christianrlong.com it's my name christianrlong.com click on schedule a healing and let's create a miracle in your life and I say that wholeheartedly, and I say that from 15 years of experience. Let's create a miracle in your life. Let's help move your life forward, whether it's a physical healing you require, whether it's a emotional or relationship healing that you require, maybe a mental healing, financial healing. <laughs> Yay, Christian. Thanks, Nina. Girl, are you still in Denver? Where are you at? You in Denver? You in Nepal? You in Florida? You in some unknown place? Hamena is coming late to the party. You're coming late to the party. Um, or even spiritual healing, right? People are always looking for life's purpose. Why am I here? What am I here to do? How am I here to contribute? Through pranic healing, we can help bring you greater clarity in that, right? So I hope that makes sense. I hope you guys were inspired tonight. I hope I can be a little tiny cheerleader for you um, to believe in you and to encourage you and to inspire you to greatness. It's interesting. I like the word inspire because inspire means to breathe life into better late than never. True. Um, to breathe life into. So when you inspire somebody, you're breathing energy. You're breathing life into them. Um, I think that's really, really cool. And then also... The word, the word enthusiasm, enthusiasm, the derivative of enthusiasm is enthos, which is Greek for God within. So someone who is, someone who is practicing enthusiasm or living an enthusiastic lifestyle, they are radiating God outward. I've always liked that. 
You ever notice when you hang around enthusiastic people or inspirational people, you get jacked up, you get excited? Because they're, they're raising your vibration. They're raising you above sadness, guilt, shame, depression. They're increasing your vibration so you're able to tap into higher energies that are more fulfilling. Mm, a topic for another day, I suppose. That being said, if you guys have any suggestions on future topics, we do these live streams every single day for the year of 2019. I'm not committing to doing every single day. Angela, I'm gonna say, Angela, you sent me a message and I think you sent it under a different, um, it got to me under a different folder on Facebook and I haven't had a chance to check that folder. I don't think I can check that folder on my phone. I can only check it on my, my laptop. So I'll get back to you later if you sent it in the other folder. Because I'm at, I think I'm at, what, 5,000 friends, so I've maxed out, so I can't accept any other friends to leave me any other messages. Um, something like that. Um, so we do these streams every single day. But I'm not promising to do the streams every single day for 2020. I have other plans for 2020. But for 2019, every single day, rain, sleet, or shine, Avani, Atma, Namaste. And we have not missed one single day for the year so far. And I'm super, super proud about that. Some of the streams were five minutes. Some of the streams were an hour. So it depends. But if you got value out of tonight's stream, please share it on your personal Facebook page, your private Facebook page. Send it to in a message to a friend that you think needs a little boost, needs a little inspiration and encouragement in their lives. And... Um, and that's it. So I love you guys very, very much. This is Christian Long, Life Enhancement Consultant, wishing you a beautiful evening, a beautiful week, and a beautiful life. Atma. Namaste. Bye-bye.